that. So what I will do is I will show you first what this program does, and then you try to read the program, okay? So remember guys that we have two types of, of, of um, interest rates, okay? So we have something that is called a, the simple interest rate. Okay, so we have the simple, and then we have the component. Got it? Now, when we talk about the simple interest rate, guys, the, the, the basic idea here, remember, is that interest don't um, sorry, generate Puff. interest. Yes. Are you showing us your whiteboard or your MATLAB? No, my whiteboard. Um, oh, we can sorry. see your MATLAB. Yeah, yeah. So let me change this one here. Yeah, now? Yes, yes, we can see it. Excellent. Okay, so I was talking to you guys that we have two types of interest rates. We have the simple interest rate, and then we have the, the component interest rate. Make sense? So now I don't know where's my, my oh, here we are. Now, remember that the simple interest rate, guys, interest don't generate interest, and the compounding interest generates interest. That, that was a complete story. Now, when we did time transformation, guys, remember the idea was the following. I'm pretty sure you want to remember. If this is a simple, for example, one year, 12%, okay? And my question is going to be, what is my simple one month? Remember that the simple interest rate is very simple. You simply divide this 12 corresponds to 12 months and I need one month. For example, what happens if I ask you for 15 days, simple? Well, what we say is 12%, equals 360 is for 360 days and I just need 15 days. Remember that this is a, an assumption, okay? So one year, we're gonna be using this equals 360 days and one month equals 30 days, okay? So this is that assumption. As you can see, it's a, it's a very simple uh, transformation. Now, what happens with the compounding interest rate? Well, in the compounding interest rate, we have a different story. Okay, so we have, for example, that one month compounding is going to be equal to one plus 0 0.12 to the power of something minus one. Do you remember what power was here, guys? At the top, it's the power of what you want. Yes. So one month and then divided by, at the bottom, you'll say 12 because- Exactly. 12, yep. You can say 12 months. It is 12 months, exactly that. So the, the thing is that you need to remember, if this is in months, this needs to be in months, just the units cancel out. So if we want 15 days, well, this is going to be 15 over 360 minus one, and then you get your, your values, okay? So this is what, what we want. So in the program, guys, what we have is, um, a okay, so we need to have a rate to transform, this one here, for both cases, okay? This is what, what I call rate to transform. Oh, I think I call rate to transform. And we're gonna review it in a minute the, the program. Then I have an interest type flag. So interest type flag is basically this one, interest type flag. And I think it is um, one, this is one, and this is going to be two. So if someone writes one, someone writes two, means company. Then I have uh, original period. Original period is this one here, are these numbers here. This is what we call original period. Then we have, uh, where is the mouse? Then we have period to transform. So these guys, nice. these guys, and these guys, you know, all of them are going to be called period to transform. Got it? So with all this information, guys, your program should be able to run whatever you want, correct? Make sense? Yes. Okay. okay, guys. So now open your program. The program is called My Time Transformation. 
Okay, take, let's say three to five minutes to analyze the program, to understand the program and to run the program using the, 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 the debug, remember? So let me show you the debug function. So for example, you can, you're gonna start asking here. Oh, and I give you uh, an, an example. No? So you can use the, this one here. You see my screen, right? My MATLAB? Yes, you yes. can see MATLAB. Okay, so let's use this one here for compounding and this one, uh, sorry, for simple. And this one is going to be for compounding. Just test, but do the stops, you know, what I'm doing. Oh yeah, I understand what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say three to five minutes to understand, to run, and then we, we come back to, to this one here. I will stop the, the recording, please remind me to restart again. Let's do this very quickly. <clears throat> As I mentioned to you guys, this one here, the, the input says rate to transform, interest type flag, original period and period to transform, right? And this is a very simple program. What it does is basically, if it's one, it's simple interest rate. And if it's two, it's compound interest rate. Then we're gonna be using a, a, from one to 12 only. So it does only for, for one year. One is one month, two, three months, two months, 12, et cetera. Et cetera. Got it? And that's it. So I have, uh, this is conventions. I know that one month is 30. I need to tell this to, to MATLAB and one year is 360 days. Uh, let's start testing with this one here. So remember that what we are saying is transform 12%, simple interest rate. The original is for a year, 12 months. And I want one month, correct? So when I do the, the red button here, what the program is going to start doing is we'll call the program and it stop here. So what it does, it has the data already, the inputs are here, 0.12, one, et cetera. And also recognizes that M is 30 and Y is 360. Okay, so what we do here is what? If rate to transform is larger than one, what is that? Basically, instead of 0 0.12, for example, I enter 12, do you agree? So if this is the case, what we are doing is simply divide this number by, by 100. Um, and here, there is something wrong here. Let me tell you what is wrong here, because here we are not assigning to anything. Now it, it makes sense, do you agree? So rate to transform is larger than one. Okay, my rate to transform equals rate to transform divided by 100. So I'm transforming this into, into decimal form. Correct? Now let's assume just for, this is just for, for satisfying these conditions in here. Let's assume that uh, what we do here is basically, we say if the original period is smaller than zero or larger than 12, we simply say, hey guys, you need to enter a number between one and 12. This is an error message. Now, let's go. If period two, period to transform is, large, is smaller than zero, less than 12, again, we said, you know what, enter a number between one and 12. And here we have an if condition for what? One is simple interest rate and else is going to be compound interest rate. And remember, take a look to this formula. It's exactly what we, what we are doing, right? What I, uh, what I show you. This is going to be the rate to transform divided by original period times period to transform. Make sense, guys? And then basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this by 100 in order to have a percentage one. Now, if we use the, the compounding, so the flag is two, it will go here, it's going to be one plus rate to transform to the power of period to transform divided by original period minus one. And that's it. And then you, you return uh, the, I think you return this too. You return the, the decimal one and the percentage one. Questions? Professor? Yes. Why is, we made a correction at the beginning with- Oh, the this one, this one. Uh, what is this one here? Here, this one here. Why? Because it was at the beginning, it was without this part. So remember that, that, that MATLAB, if you don't assign a value to another value, one variable to another variable, it is as if nothing changed. Do you agree? So you yeah. always need to assign 
this this computation here divide oh sorry what I'm doing divide rate transform divided by 100 if you just do this without this part here you are simply doing anything but then you're not changing the variable you see that it's like like having this one imagine x equals 12 okay and I say oh you know what 12 is larger than one so this should be x divided by 12 correct uh, sorry by by 100 agree with me yes okay <laughs> Oh, okay. So that's what I want. But take a look. If you take a look to X, continues being 12. You have done the transformation, but MATLAB, MATLAB say, okay, I, I have computed this number, but how do I use it? You need to be explicit to MATLAB to say, you know what? This divided by 100 is my new way to transform. Okay, I see now. Okay. Yeah, this is crucial. If you don't assign anything, the MATLAB is going to do the computations, but then what? You're not using that later. It's, it's, it's like this. Yeah, X over 12, over 100, this is what we had here. What we had before was only this part here. But we need to assign that one into a, an, into a, to a variable. Oh, okay, so you're basically saying that if the rate to transform is greater than one, then you need to change that variable to a decimal. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You see exactly this one. So imagine someone enters 12. What I will do is I will check this number and I say, oh, this number is larger than one, correct? This one here, take a look. Yes, oh, if this is larger than one, okay, transform it, do this. But you need to assign it to, to something. What I'm doing is I'm simply disappearing my rate to transform original that is 12. And now rate to transform is going to be 0 0.1 because I have transformed this here. Okay, thank you, Professor. Pleasure. Sure. Okay, so now let's let's try to do this again. Okay, of course, rate to transform is not larger than zero, so we we simply are going to go up to here. Right now, sorry, my Professor. Team... Yes, I'm having an issue trying to run this. It's saying like a error it's saying like function definition are not supported oh, yeah. in this context wait wait wait. you need to call the, the function in this way you need to call it in the in the in the workspace like this use the example that okay. is in here remember you yeah. cannot run you cannot run this directly from the from the um, uh, from the program part copy this one here in okay. the example just copy down and then enter just put your red flag, enter, and then you're going to see. Can you do that? So we all move together. Okay, I did that now and it's running, but it's giving me the like it's saying rate to transform is unrecognized. So I'm gonna check oh. what you just mentioned. One sec. Yeah, can you show me your screen? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, perhaps you haven't done. You need to do this change, uh, this one. You need to add this this one that was not in the original, original program. So I added that. Can you show me your screen? We do this very quickly. Show me your screen and then we do this very, very quickly. Uh, it's still saying I'm disabled from sharing. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, we'll stop this. Okay, guys, so basically what, what we have here is a, the, um, we have a 0 0.1 or in percentage one is 1%, you see? So 12% annual simple is, 1% in decimal 0 0.01, or in the percentage one, 1%. So now let's run the, the same example, but instead of one, let's assume that this is number two. So number two implies what? Compounding, right? Okay, so I will do that. Yeah, I don't need to stop here. I can continue. Yeah, my flag is not one, my flag is two. So what it will do is it will go here and it will compute this number here. And here we go. So my interest, my my twelve percent annual compounded equals zero point nine five percent, nine four eight nine percent, 
or is the same as 0 0.009. Make sense to everyone? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so questions about this one here. You, you should be able to do, it's, it's very simple, guys. I, you have taken most of my classes. Some of it. So just take a model for your final, for example. You can take one of the models we have done in class and just try to implement that. Okay, and just call programs, call a lot of things. You, you're going to enjoy this part here. Okay, so now let's do the, the next step. Do you remember, guys, I sent you a file that is called temps. Do you have it? Is temps or temps zero? I don't remember the name that I sent you. This was last class. Otherwise, I can send you the file. Uh, I think in Zoom, I cannot find, I cannot send you the file. Do you have these files? Otherwise, I will send you. Yes. You have it, right? Yes. Okay, Is excellent. It I have two. I have like temps, and then I have like temps save twenty twenty three. Is that the same? Um, yeah. Let me see. Let me let me look for that. All right. Temps save twenty twenty three. Let me see. I think we're gonna use the twenty 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 three. Yes. Let's use the temps save twenty twenty three, guys. Uh, well, we're going to use both, actually. Or not. Let me see. What is the difference between this one and this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is more. Yeah. So can we use, um, yeah. So let's do the temps example. Can you open this one here first? I think I give you this one also. Do you have it? Open the, the file that says temps example or x ex lp. Do you have it? Yes, I have it. Excellent. So guys, first of all, let's take a look to the Excel file. Okay, so what do we have? In the Excel file, we have the information for three cities. The temperature, I think this is a temperature for 30, 31 days for each of, each of the, the three cities, okay? And so what we are gonna be using here is we're going to start uploading the file from a CSV or XLS or XLSV. We're going to, to import this into MATLAB. And we're going to start working with a lot of programs here just to for fun and, and create a program. Got it? Okay. So the first thing that you need to remember, I, I did a, a couple of things that here are not necessarily, but show you how normally we can work on this stuff. Normally, guys, what happens is that if you have two computers, for example, you know, one is work computer and the other one is your home computer. Now I used to do this stuff. What I do is, for example, I, I do Eric zero. If I'm if I write zero here. So this implies look for the data in this directory. You see that? And I can do one, two, three, whatever you want. If, it, if I don't write zero, if I write one, for example, okay, please use this other directory. So instead of being copy pasting, copy pasting the directory, you simply, very simple, you, you assign cases and the cases go into different directories and your data is there. Got it? Now, can you change here? You have temps or you have temps zero, guys? Can you tell me? Wait, if we have it where? No, no, you have this file, temps XLS, just temps. Yes, I have just temps. Okay. Same. <clears throat> okay, so temps looks like this. Can you open your Excel file and verify that it looks exactly like this? Because we are gonna start modifying the original file. So I, I need to be sure that everyone has the same file. Your temps look like like this, only this and no other sheets, etc. Yes. 
Can you scroll down a little bit just uh, on this? So, yeah, okay, it looks like. You have it. Okay, so everyone has this. Okay, <clears throat> so let me, let me minimize. Oh, I need to close this one because I will be saving here. I will close my temps out. Okay, so can we do this? Let's do this together. Can you upload this the file up to here? So run, remember this, this program doesn't have an argument here, so you can run directly from here. Okay, so if there is no argument here, you can run it directly from here. So you just click run. And remember, the, oh, what is it doing? It's working. We, would we need to change like our put our yeah. directory oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. into you it? You need to please. You need to put your your own. Just write in zero. Write your own directory. Are you with me, guys? Be sure to, to write <clears throat> your, your directory. Uh, professor, yes. Just um, so I understand. So you, with the if statement, you said um, the program must pull it from the first um, Excel. Oh no 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 no! So these ones here basically is the same Excel file. You see, take a look. It's the same Excel file. The only one that that changes is the directory. So this implies when when do I use this one here? I use this one here normally when when I have two or three computers, one in my in my home, one in my office, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I don't want to be doing is, is looking every time for for the directory of, of, of that computer where I am working. You agree? That's all. It's simply a trick for if you have two computers, for example, if I'm in my office computer, I just write here one, and what is going to do the, the program? The one is going to go. The program is going to look in into this directory. You see that? Yes. Because sometimes your directories are different in different computers. You're different. More, it, this is less now, guys, that you have laptops moving with you everywhere. But before we used a, a desktops. So when you move from one des desktop to the other desktop, sometimes you don't have the exact same structure, directory structure. So this was a very good trick. That's all. Now, remember the, the, the command XLS read. It has, it has two inputs, two outputs, sorry. It has that temps, it considers only the numeric part of the data. So it will consider only this part here, only numbers. And it has this component. So this is always numbers and, and labels. Okay, so this is always the structure. You can put different names here, but this is always going to be numbers and labels, please. Remember, numbers and labels. And then you have the XLS read, and then you simply provide the, the address and the file and the file that you're looking for, and that's all. And MATLAB is going to open this for you. Okay, can you, can everyone be with me now?
Ready? Are you with me, guys? Are you able to open the file? Are you I, are you able to see something like that? Guys. I am having like an issue like opening it in my, my like MATLAB. It's it's giving me an error. Just give me give me a few more minutes. Yeah, yeah. take a few minutes. Just be sure about the directory. Be sure about the commas, etc. The apostrophes, etc. How can I just see your command window? Like scroll up a bit. My command window. Yeah. Lower. I, I don't have anything. Okay. You just need to be sure that indeed you are able to open the file. And that's what step number one. Please be sure that you open your file. I will stop this for a couple of minutes. So basically what, what we are doing is once we have all the data uploaded, we're gonna work only with a numeric part that, that I call temps. Now, what is doing knobs is taking the, the size of temps, right? So let me let me run this one. So take a look to what is knobs. Do you think it's a it is a, it's a good one. This is a number of observations. Do we use this one somewhere or not? I don't think we use it. No, we don't use it. So it's, it's, an, it's not necessary, it's just for. Guys, if, if I want really to have the number of observations, do you think this is a correct command or we need to do something? We can improve it. You just have to do for the number of rows, right? Yeah, so what I can do is basically, comma one, right? So you save it, you run it again. Okay, let's continue. So here we go, 31 observations, for example. You see? So now we can do D instead of, of being 31 here, guys. What we can use more professionally, we can put this one in here. Do you agree with me or not? So oh, now- agreed. Is it because you've put the one, then you just have to tell in the program that you're only looking for the rows. Exactly, exactly. And also my D now is going to be up to a number of observations. So if I have 45 observations, so I know I don't need to be changing 31 to 45, the program does immediately because it will take, okay, how many observations do you have? Oh, you have 45 rows, perfect. So my D should go from one to 45, not to one to, 30, to 31, make sense? So it's always good to have variables instead of numbers, hardcore numbers, better to have variables, guys. Okay, so, so it's all like automated instead exactly, of exactly, exactly. Because if you put numbers, you remember that the code is, is a dynamic code. So in time you, you change the data set, you change the number of rows. Instead of one month, you use two months. In that case, you know you're gonna be remembering, oh, have I done 31? If 31 is 32, is 50, you don't know. Forget about that. Let the program understand that one and then it solves it by itself. Make sense? Okay, so that's what I've done. Now guys, everything here that you have, everything that you see here is easy. Can you please read and, the read and run up, up to 54? When you're at 54, you let me know. Let's say, let's say three to five minutes maximum. Then do line by line, understand what I'm doing here. You All the commands that I've, I've used here, are we have done them already, but I want you to understand how this works. Okay, so let's say, I will stop recording. So what I'm doing here is simply I'm plotting D, is my X and my temps. So I'm plotting the data of the temperature for the three cities in, uh, in, in, in 31 days, correct? Just labeling, title, we we'll do this part here. Let's run. Let's take a look to our plot. Okay, here we go. So this is a, the daily temperature for three cities. Okay, you can do legends, you can do whatever you want. You know how to do that. So this figure, guys, is basically creating a new figure. So we are gonna preserve this one here. And what I'm doing is the histogram. You know, I put again, all the information about the histogram. So let's run this. And here I go with my histogram, okay? Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm creating some descriptive statistics. Remember the means. So what, what I'm doing here is, is the mean is gonna be um, column by column, right? 
And then I have the average of the average. So it's basically, I take the mean of the, the three ones. So I will have three, take a look. So I have a one by three. And then the mean of the mean is basically what is my total mean of, of temperatures. So if we average all the temperatures, guys, we have 13.35, this is Celsius. And if I do one by one, I have the, the average temperature in CD1 is 11.96. Obviously, the, the hottest temperature is 19.87 CT2, and the coldest is, uh, sorry, number three and CT number two. Okay, so, and then what I've done here is just to remember you, remind you the maximum, the minimum, the standard deviation of temperatures, the difference of, temp of temperature. So what this guy does is, okay, so this is interesting. So the diff guys takes the XT plus one minus XT, okay? Let's take a look. You see that? The difference of temperature between day one and day two is three centigrade. So let, let me move this here. Where are the temperatures? Here we go. You see? 12 and 15. This three implies that the, the day, the next day was three centigrades hotter than the previous day, etc. Oh, this is the way you compute the, the, the core coefficient, the, 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 co the correlation coefficient, guys, is core coef. Okay. And then what I'm doing here, so let me move. So basically, is there a correlation between all the cities? Almost nothing. You see that? Between one and two, zero, almost zero. And the other guy is negative or almost zero. Very, very low correlation between these three cities. And that's what you can see here also in the graphs here, guys. You see that? I have um, one quick question just about the max term. I was just yeah. wondering, um, what does the I like in the um, in the mid temperature, max temperature, what does that do? Yeah, what this one simply tells you here is, uh, wait a second, so I have my maximum temperature and this is what, oh yeah, yeah, this is the position. Eighth position has the maximum temperature for CD1, third position has the maximum temperature for uh, CD2 and seventh position has the maximum temperature for CD1. Okay, thank you. That, that's all, that, that's all what it does. Make sense? Okay, so we have the we have the correlation coefficient, and what I'm doing here is what, guys? What I'm doing here? Uh, so I know within you're looking at city one, and you're picking yes. out the roles where city one is greater mm -hmm. than um, ten. Exactly. I'll see. You. And that's it, just report all the columns, right? So I'm taking simply that the, all, the, all the temperatures of all the cities when CT1 has a temperature greater than 10. So let's take a look. You see, all CT1 temperature is larger than 10. And then simply copy all the columns on the other side. That's all. This is good. Yeah, and then I'm taking the average temperature of the fire, but this is, this is okay. And then I take the, the correlation between these guys here. Improves the correlation, yeah, slightly, right? Yeah, slightly, no, not a lot. Okay, so this part here is crucial, guys. Remember that the command for the, the MATLAB command for saving is XLS, right? What you need to do is you need to provide all the, all the, all the directory, the name of the file where you're gonna save this stuff, the name of the file, and then what you want to save here. So basically what I'm saying here is, okay, save daily change, save correlation for all two. What is this two meaning? What is this two meaning, guys? What is this mean or mean part means? You need to review your, your XLS right. Huh? So this is simply the, the new tab. This is a new tab number two, the new tab. 
and please name it mean. And this is a, the new, a new tab, name it a mean part. And that's all. Okay, so we can put a, oh, well, I don't save something. Yeah. yeah, now can you please run all and just a uh, red vote on the on D. Remember, this is a trick only for stopping the program somewhat. Can you run this one here? All right, let me stop already. We know how this works. Oh. Here I go. So now, can you open your temps.exp? Let me open temps.exp. Yeah. Here is my temps.exp, guys. You get the same? Sorry, give me one more second. I have to change the directory for all of them. Yeah, no problem. Prof, you said when you're saving it and you're saying, um, can you please go back to your MATLAB? Yep, definitely. Here we are. Yep. Um, the second one where you say correlation underscore all two. Yes. Is that the this, this is the name of the of the of the data, and this yeah. two is simply sheet number two. Oh, oh, so it it won't then also rename the sheet. What if you oh. wanted to also rename oh, the sheet? Here. Can you say comma and then oh? No, okay, no, no, so no. You have to do Instead of two, it. just name it. As you, you can see here, uh, what is this one here? This one. You see, sheet two has a correlation, but it doesn't change anything. But then it mm -hmm. creates a, a tab called mean and a tab called mm -hmm. mean part. You see, and then puts the, the means and, and means part, whatever you want. You see that? When okay. you just write two, it, it applies just to sheet number two. Oh, okay. And if you wanted to rename it, then you should have just written just the name. Exactly. Name you just name it. Okay. Just name it. Prof, yes. um, so does it mean if you don't put the um, to or name it, then daily change rewrites or overwrites. No, no, no. The... We, no it's like, like this one here. For example, the daily change, uh, where's my daily change here? Oh, perhaps I destroyed already my file. Let me see. No, this is the original one. Yeah, sorry, I destroyed my file. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I created the other one. That's, that was exactly what I, I was trying to show you here. When you do this stuff, you need to be very careful because what we have done, guys, is we have destroyed the... No, sorry. This is my temps x. So temps x, if I don't say any file here, any tab name here, it goes always to the first one. Make sense? Because this is a different file. It's not my temps file. So this is a new file called temps x. And then it's simply when you don't put uh, something here after this one here. So this implies by default, take the first one. Now, be very careful. But indeed, what your colleague have said is that if you have data, for example, and you put this data on top of that, it, it will destroy the original data. OK, and I will, I will show you how to, how to add data to existing data set in, in a couple of minutes. So I have a question. So like as it is now written yes. in your file, the third line, the third like um, XLS write line wouldn't overwrite the first one. Uh, which one? This one? Yeah, the third line, the third one. So this on one, that. 56, yeah. I mean? No, because they have a different, a different tab. You see that if I put here two, Yes, this one here is going to overwrite this one here. You see that? But as soon as I'm creating a new file, this 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 is a, a name of a file. I, it is not it is not not saying anything. This is not computer mean. No? It's simply the name of my tab. Take a look to, to your tab. You see the name of the of the tab is mean, 
and mean underscore part. So this is what you have here, mean and mean underscore part. These are names of your tabs. Okay, tabs. so it creates another sheet, but yes. because you only put two in the second one, it doesn't name the second one, but the other yeah, exactly. three the other ones name it. Exactly. Okay, all That's right, it. thank you. Okay, pleasure. Okay, guys, everyone is able to run this one here. So we're going to improve on this model. Okay, there, there are a couple of things that is going to be very, are going to be very useful for you. Ready? Can you open, please, your file that is called Temps X Safe 2023? Can you open that file? Sorry, Professor, I have one more question. Yeah. And the um, one? Yeah. Here we so just, uh, I'm, I'm getting a warning saying that it's unable to write in an Excel format and it's trying to write in CSV format. Is that just normal? Because I know you could also open CSV in Excel. Yeah, uh, but no, why is he saying that? Perhaps there's a format here, perhaps you can write XLSX, a more modern form of Excel. Okay. But you should be able to, to save it. Have you opened your Excel file? You need to open your okay. Excel file and verify that you have all the data as we have here. I opened the original Excel file, the one that we are pulling no, no, everything. No, no. no. But... we need to, we, you need to, open, we have created a new file that is called temps X, docs X, XLS. You need to open this one here. Oh, be sure oh, that that's, you, uh, you have that's, this directory, yeah? Yeah, I have that directory. I'm saying that's the part that won't load in because it's saying it's attempting to write it in CSV. So those, the daily change, the correlation all. No, like, no, no I, that's yeah. impossible. So let me let me check. Yeah. Do you have everything correct? Have you changed the, um, the directory? I have here? the same yes. problem. Yeah, I saved that. Someone I saved can, that. Yeah, someone can show me the your program, one of you. Uh, just give me one second. I'm going to check and see if it saved the CSV part. I'm going to check my directory. So okay. give me one second. If someone else wants to show me that your screen, guys, I, I can I can very quickly take a look. Okay, no problem. I'll show it to you just now. Yeah. recording and let's continue working on the, on, the, on the program. Okay, guys, so let's take a look to this, this program. What it does, it does exactly the same as the other one. The only trick that I have done to you here, guys, is a couple of things. You know, normally this is a trick to, to write huge batches of data, okay? So when you need to open and close, open and close, open and close the same directory, this is the way to do it. You simply name directory. See, this is the directory where I have all my data. Then you have a project name. Well, my project name is going to be this one here. This is uh, what I will save all my files. 
And then you use this one here, guys. This is a really, really good. Uh, uh, Prof, are you projecting something? Oh, I'm not showing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Yeah, now you see that? Yes. Yeah, I'm working on Temps example, save 2023. And what I was telling to you guys is the best way to, to when I want to repeat some processes, okay? You don't want to be copy, copy, copy this one here, like we have done here. You see that we have copied something that is already there. So what we can do is we can simply define a directory. This is a name, okay? And the directory is where I put my data. I can call project name. This is a, it can, it's also a name. You can change it. Is what is going to be your project called? And then this is very cool, guys. Take a look to what happens when I do this stuff. It happens. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I need to define. Can you? Can we run? Let's run up to here. Let's run up to column. Sorry, row ten. Because I need to be defined, I need to define directory and I need to define project name. So now we can do the same. Are you with me? You need to be sure, guys, that you, you have here your directories. Huh? OK, we need to run, guys, otherwise we're never going to finish. I will do this, and then you, you replicate. I, I will explain you, OK? So basically, when you write this, you use a name. And this is the way, take a look to this part here. When we wrote in the previous case, you know, uh, read, put in temps and labs, this is my directory, this is my file. This is exactly what I have done, guys, and read from sheet number one. This is exactly what I have done from here. And then the way to, this is simply text, or for MATLAB, this is purely text. Now, if you want to execute this one, you simply do eval u, and take a look to what it does. It simply eval executes what you have told MATLAB to do. So run, and now you have, take a look now, you have temps, and you have labs created. So what I have done is I have uploaded the files. Take a look, if I write temps, I have the data already uploaded. And then the other thing that I do guys is that sometimes you don't wanna be saving every single thing that you do, you know, or, or you want to save just at the end when you are sure about your results. So that's why normally I use this save equal one. So basically if I put here zero, MATLAB is not going to save, it's simply going to give me the results. Okay, if I put save zero, MATLAB is gonna save. You know, for example, if save equal one, okay, save what I what I'm telling you to save. Now, can we run up to here? Let's run up to here. I need this. I don't need this. Let's continue. Okay, so what I what I have done here, guys, is very simple. It's simply the, the sum of columns. What I've done is I, I have some. Uh, the, the temperatures, you know, and what I've done, this is by two. Basically what I've done is one by one. So what I've done is when I do sum two, I'm summing this one, it's 20, 38, right? You see, here's a 38. So what I'm summing is by columns. Then the average, the average, uh, the average column is simply the mean of temperatures two. So it's by columns, etc. Okay. So then what I'm doing, and take a look to this one here. If I do if save equal one, remember this is a logical, that's why I have equal equal. Then what I'm doing is the following, please attention here. I'm saying max observations equals size of temps one. So what I'm doing is computing the number of rows. So my number of rows is 31. And then what I will do guys is I will create again the use. But what I will do is I will say, okay, in sheet one, start at position D1, okay? What are you gonna do that? You're gonna add, the name is going to be sum. 
So let's open your, your Excel file. This is my original stem safe 2023. This is the original one. You see? So what is D1? I'm telling MATLAB in D1, in D1, just write this one here. Some, uh, just write a starting at D1, at sum and average. Create the column names. So basically my, what I will do is I will create some here that, that just the labels, sum and what is the other one? I don't remember, average, I think. Okay, so that's what I'm telling MATLAB. So for MATLAB, what I need is if, if you don't have a limit, you simply start the first one. D1 start with sum and E is going to be averages, I think. This is what I'm saying, average, you see? Okay, good. Once I have the names done, what I, will, what I want MATLAB to do is, okay, you know what? Now, it starts from D2. Two, I need to, to put up to where? Well, up to max ops plus one. Remember, max ops is 31. Why I'm doing plus one? Because the max ops, guys, is only the days, right? But I'm a, I'm, I am adding one row. So indeed, in Excel, this is going to go from D2 to D32, correct? This num and num to string simply transforms a number into a string. So everything is, uh, is words here, are, are characters here. So take a look to what happens. What I'm saying is go from D2 to D32. So what, what MATLAB is gonna, is gonna do, what MATLAB is gonna do is start at D2 and finish at D32. And what are we gonna locate there? Well, locate the data that I have generated. So locate some call, it's this, this here. Now the average call, please put it starting at E2, finishing at E, this one here is going to be 32, correct? Because 31 observations plus one is 32. Then I transform these numbers into letters. And then I have my, my, 30, my two to 32. So basically I'm saying the average is going to start at E2 and finishes, is, it will finish at E32. Okay? Guys, I need to, you need to review this one here and I will answer some questions later, but that's what we are doing here, okay? And then I'm doing descriptive statistics and then I do another saving. You can see guys, this saving is exactly the same as the one I, I had in, a, in the previous example. But it's, it's a more efficient way of writing this stuff. Okay, when you do simulations, guys, this, this is the way to write. Okay, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so I can stop here. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll continue. Let's see. 29. What is 29? Oh, because I have this open. I need to close this one here. Okay, so now it will run. Can you please try to run, guys? I, I want to be sure that you, you're able to run. And if you're able to run, you can go step by step and understand what this program is doing. So if you open, can you open your, your, what is that, your temps? Can you open your temps, save 2023 Excel, the Excel one? Okay, two minutes guys. So yeah, what I want from you is please read this part here. Okay, understand how this works. The next class, you tell me if you if you have some doubts. Now, 
what we are going to do now, guys, is very simple. We are going to create a table. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I have the temperatures. Let's do up to here. It's very simple stuff. I have the medians, I have the standard deviations, I have the means, I have et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm doing is basically I'm putting all, all next to the other one, right? So let's see what is the, the, the matrix to export. It has the means, it has the standard deviations, it has the medians, and it has what? It has the correlations. And that's all. And then you export this one here. You have the maximum, the, the sizes. So this is the way in which you name maximum observation is simply the, the number of, of rows, okay, of your matrix. Now, the column name in this case is going to be mean, standard deviation, median, and correlation. And the row name is going to be simply column one, a, so CT1, CT2, and, and CT3. Got it? And then you start writing this stuff. And let's stop here and let's see how this works. And let's go to your Excel file. Yeah, open. And you see, so now you know how to put column names, guys, and also row names. That's the way it works. Makes sense. I have the mean per city. I have the standard deviation, the median, and the correlation per city. Yes, to create a table. Were you able to to see this one here to create this Excel file? Yes. Excellent. Okay, so we can continue. I can stop here. Questions, guys? Yeah, your fifth assignment, assignment is going to come uh, at the end of, the, of tonight. It's going to be related to this stuff, OK? So you're going to be asked to create a bunch of things. Yeah, this is going to be the fifth. No, we have done the fifth assignment already. It's the four loops, right? Yeah, this is good. Yeah, so it's the sixth and the seventh. It's the sixth Six that is going to come. Yeah, that, that, that is missing. Okay, guys. So let's create now. Let's let's move this for a minute. Let's. I have sent you another one. Another one that says table example. You see that? Can you open that, please? Okay, guys. Are you with me in this table example? This is a very, very useful tool, guys, that is called tables in, in MATLAB. You say table. How this works? Let's copy one by one. Okay. So let's do let's do this one here. Can you just copy? I will clean this part here. Just copy this here. Take a look, guys. It creates a table immediately for you. So how this works? You enter the data in, in how, how do you want the data to be? So this is a column vector, column vector, column vector, column vector. And then you enter, this is a, a, the text. <clears throat> this is text that you want to be also in part of the table, New York, California, Massachusetts. And then once you have entered all the data 
Okay, so this is data part. Up to here is data part. And you can, you can mix text with numbers. Text, remember, is with uh, curly brackets, and uh, numbers are always with brackets. And then you start defining your variable names. So these ones here. Okay, in my case, it's going to be age, gender, height, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And once you have done that, you enter raw names. And raw names, as soon as it's text, remember, it's a curly bracket. You enter Thomas Gordon Percy, for example. And then you created your table. Make sense? Now, what you can do is you can write a table. I will not write this at this point. But you can write table, guys. It's, it's very similar to, to the Excel is right. But the first thing you need to enter is the input. So what variables, what table you want to, to save? Oh, I want to save table C. Where? Here. And what is the name of your file? Tables XLS X. OK. What I'm doing here is a sheet number one. Write variable names. True. I want to, to write that, the variable names. And write raw names. True. And basically, it's going to create a table in Excel. So this is much simpler than the one that we have done here. Do you agree? This is not a table. This is a, we have created our own table. But if you want to create a table, table is much simpler. You simply do, you create a, the names, et cetera, so you can immediately do this stuff. OK, we'll do this later. Now, let's create another table, guys. Let's create B. Take a look to B. So I have gender, age, birthplace, weight, and height. You know, basically, I have the same information here, but I don't have names here. And also, the order of the, of the data of the columns is completely different. Not completely different, but it's different. Got it? And what is beautiful, guys, is this one here. OK, right? I don't care. It's vert concatenation, vertical concatenation. Take a look to what happens now. So what I'm doing is I'm putting together A and B. But you are going to ask me, but how is this possible? Because A has more information than B, even though we have diff we have se several several columns that are very similar. Okay, take a look to what it does. With no names, simply names like rows, and then organizes guys your table. You see that it has organized that the data that you had in a, in a second table, the columns has been organ have been organized. Everything has been organized for you. It's, it's extremely extremely beautiful product. You see that. Are you with me up to this point? Yes. Can you scroll back up to the A, please? <coughs> this one is A. Oh, okay. I see. Thanks. OK, good. So now from here, well, from here, guys, the program tells you, now we can run the program. Let's, let's run up to here. Can you please, guys, uh, change your programs? Change the directors of your programs, please, so we can all run. Just change this part here, up to here. No tables. Can you, one minute to change that? Yeah, let me show you. Let me save this one here for a minute. Um, okay, let me show you guys uh, polynomials. We're going to start working now with polynomials. Okay? And, and in, in economics, we do a lot of work with polynomials. Okay? We do functions, we do polynomials, we do optimization, we do a bunch of things. So imagine, guys, that I want to represent x to the power 4 minus 12x cubed plus uh, let's say 25x plus 116. Okay, so this is our polynomial, right? Now, the thing is, how do I represent this polynomial in Excel? Well, in sorry, MATLAB. In, in MATLAB, you go this way, okay? So that the highest is going to be one, then I have minus 12, but I have an issue here. I don't have x squared, correct? Indeed, I have an x squared, but it's accompanied, accompanied by zero. So basically, I say 0, 25, and 116. So this is the way you enter a polynomial in, in MATLAB, guys.
Make sense? So imagine, guys, that we have all the, the, the operations here are going to be very simple. Do you remember? Have you do you remember these type of equations? What you are trying to find is trying to find the root of x that satisfies this equation, right? I have power four, so I will have four values of x that satisfy this equation. So what is the command, the, the MATLAB command for here? What we're going to be using, guys, is the command of roots. Okay, we are going to do this in a minute. Then, if you have the roots, and want to go back to equation, to the polynomial, what we're going to be using, guys, is simply poly. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do these two things first. Oh, what I'm doing. Yeah, let's do this in MATLAB. Yeah, so let me clean again this stuff here. Okay, so what we do is let's uh, we said that x, let's call this x. No, yeah, let's go. So let's call this p, okay, polynomial. It's going to be, I'm um, just, it's 1 minus 12, 0, 25, 116. Do you agree? So for MATLAB, this is a vector, but now, as soon as this is a vector, also this implies this is x4, 3rd, 2, 1, and 0. Okay, be careful, guys, that MATLAB, there is no way MATLAB can recognize that there is no x squared. If you simply write 1 minus 12, 25, and 116, MATLAB is going to be cube, square, first order, and, and zero order. It's clear for everyone. This part here is clear. Yes. No. Please explain so, that again. Yes. So if you tell MATLAB, okay, let me do this P1. If you tell MATLAB, this one here, okay, because you know that in your equation, when you wrote the equation, it, it is x to the power 4 minus 12x cubed plus 25x plus 116. Do you, do you agree? Yes. Okay, but this is what you know, but how MATLAB is going to know that indeed there is zero x squared? There is no way MATLAB is going to magically understand that. Do you agree? Uh -huh. So that's why we need to write necessarily a zero, even though for the position that doesn't exist, x2. Okay. Okay. Uh, so technically, technically, if you write this one here, guys, is x to the zero, x to the one, x to the two, x to the three. And, and that's that's what you, you don't want this. You don't want this. You want this to be x0, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Do you agree? So the missing pieces of the of x's that are not present in your polynomial, you simply need to write that here. Okay. So now how do we find that the roots of a, of a polynomial? Simply name. And the command here is roots. And then your polynomial. Here are the roots of your polynomial. Okay, so are the values p are the values x that make your polynomial equal to zero? What I what I draw in the in the before in the painting in the paint. Now, if you want to recover this one, so, so let's call this p. What you use is poly of r. So now, what is poly does is basically if you have the the values, sorry, the roots. You go reverse. If I have the roots, I want to recover the polynomial, just poly, and then you get it. Oopsie. Yeah, this is, let me check. Here we are. 1 minus 12, 0, 25, and 116. That is exactly what I said. 1 minus 12, 0, 25, and 116.
Okay, so what I will do now, guys, is you you tell me what I'm doing. I'm doing I'm defining one. I will say one, two, three, four, and I will define B. Let's say one, four, nine, sixteen. Okay, now if you believe that this is a polynomial, can someone can read this polynomial? How do you read this polynomial? So would A be like, oh, we want me to do A or B? A, B. Okay, so it should be um, X4, like X to the fourth power plus 4X cubed plus 9X, wait, wait, hold on, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> X cubed yes, plus cube. 4X squared. <laughs> Right. Um, plus 9x plus, plus 16. 16. Exactly. Right. That's the way you read it. Exactly that. Exactly. So the easy way to read it is better. You start x0. 16 is x0. It's a constant. Power 1, power 2, and power 3. Make sense, everyone? OK. So let's create C, and let's do the product of A and B. So C, uh, how do you use, how do you do uh, the multiplication of polynomials, the multiplication of polynomials is called comb. And then you simply do A comma B. Okay, I want someone to read this. Yes. Can you go yes. back to your whiteboard for one second? Yes, give me one second. I need to... Change this one. Yep. Here we go. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so who can read this, this polynomial? I think yep. I'm going to read it from the right, right? My right. Yeah. Okay, uh, tell me. So that would be 64, right? It's a constant. Yep. Yes. And then 84x. Yep. 75x squared. Mm -hmm. uh, 50x to the 3, 20x to the 4, 6x to the 5 and then x to the six. Exactly, that's the way it works. Okay, that's the way it works, guys. That's, it's very, very simple. Make sense to everyone? Yes. Can you scroll up just a little bit in your command window? I think I just missed a few of the commands. Okay, so oh, R was the roof, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then Polly just takes the roots Go and back. change. Exactly. Go back. Okay, but then, hmm. okay. Okay, now we're doing multiplications, but. But how does Polly, I'm just curious, how does Polly know that it's, does it just save the original polynomial? Because no, how... no, 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 no. It, it accepts, you know, the Polly command tells, if you, what is the input of the Polly command? The roots. So the values of x that make your, your polynomial equal zero. You just put those, those values and then the poly is gonna, is gonna recover from the roots. Remember, uh, let me check one second. Where's my, let me, let me explain this very quickly. Yeah. Right. So imagine that we have a, x plus two, x plus one equals zero. Okay, so the roots are minus two and minus one, do you agree? 
Yes. Okay. So if I give the roots to MATLAB, what MATLAB is going to do, well, it's more complex than that, but it's going to do, ah, okay, this is equal to x plus 2, x plus 1, and this is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2, oh, sorry, uh, 3x plus 2. You see that? So this is the, the poly. Okay. Okay. Poly of minus 2 and minus 1. And then does this, does this, and creates your polynomial. Okay, I understand now. Thanks. Perfect. Okay, guys, uh, let's continue. Where's my. My mouse. Okay, so now, guys, uh, let's, let's try to do something. Can you open your five poly eye? Okay, so let me let me show you something first. Yes, you you can understand. Look, guys, let's do the, the sums, okay? And then you you gonna understand the program the program very simply. The sum of um, of uh, two polynomials. So imagine, guys, that I have x squared plus three three x plus six. And I have, this is my A, and I have another B that is simply 4X plus three, okay? So how do you do A plus B? Do you remember that? What you need to do is basically, you need to sum one by one. This is going to be X squared, uh, the, the polynomial degree. X squared plus seven and X plus nine. Do you agree? Make sense, guys? Yes. Okay, so how do we tell MATLAB about A? Well, A is going to be one, three, six. And how do we tell B is going to be for MATLAB? If, if I write four and three, we have an issue because they are two non-conformable equations, uh, 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 vectors. So what I need to tell MATLAB is I need to do a trick. I need to do zero, do you agree? Mm. So now MATLAB has a, a vector, a, a sum of vectors, very simple. It's going to be one, seven, nine. This is a notation for this part here. Got it? So that's why, guys, you need to complete zeros. You need to do a completion of zeros, okay, to make the sum of, of two matrices, uh, sorry, of two polynomials of different degrees. This is exactly what Polyad is doing for you guys. Can you take one minute? No, let's say. Three minutes to analyze polyad, please. You have this file. Can you open this file? The name is polyad. Um, the one that is doing this polynomial additions is called polyad. This is your file. I will stop this for three minutes. Ah, okay. So in order to do polyad, I will repeat this again, okay? In order to do polyad, we need to be sure that the number of row, uh, sorry, of columns of two vectors are exactly the same. So let's assume that I have one that has three columns, one, two, three, and the other one only has two uh, columns. So what we need to do in order to allow MATLAB to sum is that we need to put a zero on, in front of the, of the original B matrix. Now, how this works? Na equals three, one, two, three elements, and Nb is going to be only two elements. Now, what the program is doing is simply creating, is putting zeros before A. So now let's take a look. Zeros one Nb minus Na, but Nb is larger than, sorry, it's smaller than Na. So this is going to be a negative number and a vector of a negative position is empty. So basically what we have here is an empty matrix joined together with A, simply is A, correct? Now, let's see what happens in the other case. So here I have something different. I have zeros, one, uh, Na is three, Nb is two, and I will join this with, with B. So what is this one here? What is gonna create this one here? It's gonna create zeros, one comma one, 
and join it with B. So what is zeros of one comma one? This is a MATLAB command. It creates simply a zero. One one is one 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 column, one row, one row, one column, and B. So this is exactly what you want, guys. Take a look. Of course, now zero B is equal to four and three. And take a look to what happens now. This is exactly the same as all this part here. Okay, so that's what we're doing. <clears throat> Questions? Okay, so let's let's move now into the into MATLAB now. <clears throat> Okay, so this is what we're doing. So let's try this one here. Uh, let's try A and B. And let's try this one. Yikes, forget about this part here. It's only this one here. Now, do you see, uh, no. I want this one here. Do you see, guys, A has four elements, B has three elements. Do you agree? If I want to sum A plus B, what I need to do is I need to add a B, uh, sorry, a zero in four, before four. Do you agree, guys? Guys, you agree or not? Yes. Okay, so now let's run our program. And I will stop here. This is okay. Let's continue. Here we go. You see N of A is four. N of B is three. So this part here disappears because N of B is less than N of A. So this part disappears. A stays constant. It stays as A. But what happens here? This is going to be zeros. N A is four minus three. This is going to be creating a zeros one one that is a zero. It's going to be, if you take a look to what happens here, You see, we have created a zero before the, the matrix B, and B is this one here. Where is B? 4, 9, 16, now is zero, 4, 9, 16. And now once I have completed this one here, I simply sum, and then I obtain my 1, 16, 12, and 20. Make sense? Let's check if, if we are summing correctly. So let me do, a, let me do B, and let me do, we call it B. You see? So remember that this four needs to be moved. Oh, so let, let me, B is not this one here. B is this one here. It's I'm out of the program already. Okay, so here we go. This is B, modified B. This is A. And you can see, and let me let me take P. Yeah, I need to run this part here. Yeah, take a look. One, six, 12, and 20. So it works. If you sum this plus this, you obtain this because you have you have put zeros before the polynomial. Okay. You have another example, guys, in polyad one. So just take a look. It's a little little more. You can add up, up to three or four matrices. That's okay. But you, you want to understand this program here. I need to continue moving and another thing, guys. Okay, so let's do polynomial derivation. So I think it was C. Yes, imagine, guys, that I have a, a polynomials uh, uh, like C. So this is power six, five, four, two, no, three, two, one, zero, correct? This is X to the power six is the, 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 the maximum. Okay, so now follow me, guys. Let's assume I want to take the derivative, okay? 
And the derivative is going to be fully there. Of what? Of C. So what I'm doing, take a look to what I'm doing. Someone understand this one here. What is this 6, 30, 80, 150, 150 means and 84? Yeah, someone. Can you just repeat that one more time, Professor? Yes. Okay. So let me stop sharing, and I will do the. I will do the sharing in the. In here. So okay. So I have guys. Um, C. In, in letters. Okay. C equals x to the power six plus six to the power. 6x to the power 5 plus 20. I will copy these numbers 50 plus 75 plus 84 and plus 64. So this is the, the C that we have. This is x power 4, x power 3, x power 2, and x. So in, in MATLAB, this is known as 1, 6, 20, 50, 75. 84 and 64, right? This is a MATLAB notation. Now, poly there, if I apply poly there, I'm doing the derivative of C. So what is the derivative? Tell me, how do you take the derivative? Or uh, so this is basically the derivative of C respect to X. So this is equal to what? Okay, so that should be um, six X to the power of five uh -huh. plus, 18 yeah. x. Yeah, wait, this is, yeah. This oh, is that's five. a five? Yeah. Okay. 30 x um, to the power of four. Yeah. Plus, wait, that's 20 in front or 10? Yeah, 20. Okay. So that's 80 x yeah. to the power of three. Yep. Yeah. Um, 150 x to the power of two, 150 x, and then 84. Exactly that. Exactly that. Okay. So the command poly there, this is exactly what the poly, polynomial derivative does. This is exactly that. Okay. So let me go back to my, let me go back to my MATLAB. This is exactly 6, 30, 80, 150, 150, 84. You see that? That's what we have done, guys. I was okay. able to get the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So now <clears throat> there is another command, guys, that is really, really interesting. So let's do. Okay. You tell me what I'm doing here. N is <clears throat> in space. 
let's say from minus one, where's my minus one, two, three. What I'm doing here, guys. Come on, what is this? Guys, what is this? Lean space. Aren't you telling it where you want it to start? And well, end? Okay. Yes, I want to start at minus one. I want to end at yeah. three. <laughs> then if I don't put anything here, because it has three arguments, right? Yeah. If, if I don't put anything, the, the default is equal to 100. To one, yeah. Uh, so it's give me 100 values between minus one and three. That's what we're saying. I will not print because it's a, it's a big number. So now what I want is, imagine guys, I tell you, okay, guys, you have this polynomial. It's going to be x cubed. So you have this polynomial. So someone can read this polynomial. Uh, I think it's minus 10 uh -huh. and then minus 7x. Yeah. Uh, 4x squared and then x. x cubed, right? Excellent. So do you have an idea how the graph looks like? How this function looks like, guys. This was always my problem when I when I tried to understand economics the, the first time I saw it. Because That's in it. economics we use all the polynomials possible: the quadratic, cube, uh, quadratic and cube. Uh, but I have no idea how this this polynomial looked like. Right. Right. So what do we do now? Let's take a look to this one here. Let's use this this command polyval. E. Evaluated in X. So what I'm saying here is to MATLAB, please evaluate this polynomial using these values. Okay, and now what we can do is we can do a very simple plot. Plot uh, X comma B. No, no, it's not X. Um, yeah, it is X and I have B, yeah. And take a look to what happens. Here we go with our function, guys. Do you see that? So in this interval, <laughs> in this interval, guys, this is how my function looks like. In minus one and three. So poly is does it just give like so your x values would just be the interval or something like that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, okay. that is, you know, it is like what we do when we have x and y. Remember, I start changing the values of x. Remember that? Oh, okay. All right. And then yeah. I understand. One value of x, what is the value of y for? Exactly. That's that's all what I do. So what I do is here is when x is minus one, what is the value of y? Oh, in this case, p. Well, it's going to be minus one for times x minus sorry one times one minus one cube, four times minus one square minus seven times minus one not up to power one, and minus ten. Make sense to you guys? Questions, guys? Do you do you get it? Yes, I think I've got it. Perfect, guys. Okay, so let's do some interpolation, very simple interpolation. And with that, we are, we are done for today. So let's assume, guys, that I have, um, let's create x, not x, 
to be from one increasing zero point one and ending at let's say at one. X, what happened? Ah. Okay, and let's create Y, guys. Okay, so let, let me copy this one here that I have somewhere here. Can you copy these values and then we can do interpolation? Okay. I just need a few more seconds. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys. So, how do we do a let's do first polynomial fits? Okay, for a polynomial fit, we what we need first is what what fit do we want? What type of polynomial we want to use? Okay, let's let's say that I want to do a, a polynomial fit. N one implies what? A line, right? X plus something is is a line. So what we can do, guys, is okay. So now let's do the following. Uh, what I want to do is I want to polyfit. Oh, sorry, no. Polyfit. Okay. What I want is x. What is my x? Yeah, x, y, and and n. So this is the following. I want to find the fit, the polynomial fit of x and y. And the polynomial is going to be degree number one. 
So this is the best line, guys. This is the oil is, oil is regression. I will, I will show you in a minute what, what is the meaning. So this is X, so 10.31 X plus 1.44. So this is my best fit line. So let's, now I want, to, I want to graph this one here. Okay, so what we can do is let's do XI. And let's, let's say that this is going to be lean space. You just follow me guys. Zero to one. Let's, Sorry, let's can that. I scroll up one more time just to see X? Yes. So oh, X is simply zero, zero point one, zero point two. X is here, this one. Okay. Make sense? Then I'm defining, I will go more granular. X1 is X1 is going to be from zero to one, 100 observations, of course. And then what I will do is I will do my polyval. What I want is my polyval P and my values X1. So what I'm doing, guys, is I have, first, I have my data, okay? X and Y are data. Then what I want to do is I want to have a, a polynomial degree one. I want to fit my regression, my, my data with a polynomial degree one. So I'm saying polyfit X and Y, how many degrees of, uh, sorry, what is a polynomial degree? One, and this is my, my line. Now what I want is I want to see how my line looks in, in front of the data and, and everything. So what I'm creating is X1 is the space between zero and one. And I will evaluate my, my, poly, my polynomial that I obtained, this line, using the values of X1. And, and then what I will do is I will do the plot, just to, to take a look. I will plot uh, the original data, X, X comma Y, and I want to have perhaps a small rounds. Then I will do X comma Y, and x i comma z and then i want i'm sorry perhaps this one okay you want to see what i'm doing here Oh, it's not X I X X one. Ready? So what we have drawn here, as you don't see, I, yeah, the line is uh, kind of a, the orange one, you see the orange one? The orange one, guys, is my, my polyfeed linear, my linear polyfeed. So basically, if I have all the dots and I try to feed the line using the, the least square method that we use, OLS, this is what you get. Okay, so now as a matter of exercise, guys, I want to, to graph in the same graph, let's say a uh, polynomial two feet. Can you do that? So now n equals two, and I want you to add the, 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 the quadratic feet to this equation, to this uh, graph. One minute, guys. <laughs>
and we stop here. Just give me the polynomial fit, a polynomial second degree polynomial fit. Okay, guys, so what do we do? Well, now I need to have n is going to be two. I want to do the poly, uh, poly fit. Nothing, it's already done, right? Here you have a quadratic function, guys. Now what I need to do is I want to evaluate this one. Oh, well, x1 is, is okay, it's the same. I want to evaluate p and x1. And now what I want is I want to plot this again. Are you with me, guys? Uh, yes. Okay, so here I don't We're need just to... adding that one. We're just That's adding all. the quadratic line, right? To yeah. the plot. That's oh. it. So perhaps I, I want to do this blue. I don't know how, how it's going to look, but in any case. So X1, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm simply, oh yes, uh, I need to do what guys in order to not delete my, my figure. I need to do what? Hold on, add, remember that? Add figure, uh, oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold to keep on. it on the same figure. Exactly, okay. to keep it in the same figure. And here we go. You see my blue, well, it doesn't look very nice, but my blue looks much better, right? The quadratic, appears to be capturing better the dynamics of my of my function, of my data, correct? Of my scatter diagram. Agree with me, guys? Yes. So the line is okay, but the quadratic appears much better. Now, guys, there is something that the people always, always do. They say, oh yeah, quadratic, perhaps a cube, perhaps, you know, the, the fourth power, 10th power can do a, a better job. That's what it's called overfitting, guys. So can we do the same exercise now? But I will exaggerate now. I will, I will say, you know what? I believe that the degree polynomial 10 is gonna solve our lives. So I do this. Then I have a polynomial degree 10, do you agree? Now mm -hmm. what I will do is I will, da, 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 I will do this stuff and I will plot this one here and perhaps I can green. And perhaps just like that, just to, to see. So what I'm saying is that Polynomial one is okay, polynomial two is much better, but perhaps it's polynomial 10, much, much, much better. Okay, and, and see what happens. Oh, oh yeah, I did it, correct. Take a look. You see the green one? That's this weird wings. So this is guys what is called overfitting. Okay, so that's why it has a technique. You need to be optimizing. What is the, the, the optimal degree of, uh, the optimal degree of my polynomial? That's something we're gonna start optimizing next, next class, guys. Okay? Overfitting is when you enter the, the degree of the polynomial that fits your data is much, much higher than needed. And of course, it's gonna be catastrophic. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, questions. So once we stop here and we continue on, on Wednesday. So I just want to make sure I have the the entire like process of that last part, right? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So you um you started off with just fitting. Wait, no, not the fitting. No. By evaluating. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's it. So you need to first start with the degree of your polynomial. Okay. Then you need to have data. And then what you try to do is you try to feed what is a polynomial that best fits my relation between my relationship between x and y. And this depends on obviously on the degree of your polynomial. Agree? Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, you have your polynomial. So well, this polynomial is degree de degree ten. It's a big polynomial. Then what we do is as usual. You know what? I want to see this graph. I, I how do I see the graph? I seem to use polyval. I need to create uh, evaluate my polynomial. What is my polynomial p? What are the values I will evaluate? I will use to evaluate x one. So this is my my variable c. 
So it's basically, I'm, I'm evaluating my polynomial using these values, that's all. And then I simply plot, and then my plot obviously provides me, oh, I deleted it, provides me the, the graphs that I showed you. But that's, okay. that's, that's the stage. Yeah, so I just, I think I was just slightly confused by which one is like the one we're testing against. So the one we're testing against is Z, right? Because that was the straight yeah, line. Yeah, 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 Z, okay. exactly. C is a, the polynomial 10, C is a polynomial 2, and C is a polynomial 1. The evalu is, the, is the function evaluated in given values of, of, of X. Make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, guys, so we stop here uh, and we see you on, on Wednesday. Okay, please study, uh, you have all the material. So I, I'm giving you now the program. So you need to code the programs. It, it, they are there. So you just need to go and practice. <coughs> so Oops. professor, are you yes. gonna send the last homework on Wednesday? The, the last, uh, no, I will send you the homework today. It's, uh, oh, okay. Uh, this, remember that the homework is for next, next, uh, well, we almost finished for next week. Yeah, I will I will send this to you and then try to do as much as you can because we have a lot of work to do to continue doing yet. Yes, I will okay. I will send you the sixth assignment uh, today or tomorrow. Okay, very early tomorrow. No, I think I can do this today. I will do this today. Okay, guys. Half um do we have class next week? No, we are done on Wednesday. We are oh. done on Wednesday. Yes, and we are okay. Uh, and on Wednesday, the last 30 minutes, we're going to talk about your ideas, your projects, you know. It is basically show me that you can program, that's all. If you do the, all the, 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 the homeworks, all the, the assignments, you're gonna be more than one prepared to create something for you. Okay? Yeah. Okay, guys, so have a good night and see you on Wednesday then. Yeah. I just had one more question, like yes. just after, after you're done with the whole, it's not related oh, yeah. to the class. 